This is The Book of Life, a podcast that uncovers life lessons from Judaism's most important book, helping you power your day with purpose. Here is Ruchi Koval. When I first entered the working world as an actual grown-up and got my first real job, it occurred to me that everyone I knew wanted a job, but also wanted to be on vacation from that job. That seemed to be the sweet spot. Nobody really wanted to work, but nobody wanted to be unemployed either. So having a job and being on vacation seemed like the perfect way to go. But vacation is a funny thing, right? We have high expectations of our vacations based on hours of research and combined with loads of advertising consumption. So this creates a perfect storm of unrealistic expectations and hopes for what the vacation will do for you. Cure all your problems, get rid of your anxiety, fix all your relationships, restore you to good health, take care of your skin issues, and help you resume an excellent high-fiber, low-fat diet, or whatever is in vogue these days. Of course, we know that we also need a vacation after the vacation, right? The Jewish concept of vacation is very interesting. The modern Hebrew word for vacation is chofesh, which comes from the Hebrew word chofshi, which means free. So vacation really means that you're free. But the concept of a vacation from the Torah is actually something quite different. The Torah prescribes three vacations over the course of a year. Sounds good, right? These vacations are called in Hebrew the Shalosh Regalim, also known as the Three Pilgrimage Holidays. Many Jews might assume that Rosh Hashanah or Hanukkah would be two of them, but actually, the Three Pilgrimage Holidays are Sukkot, Shavuot, and Passover. Those were the three times of year in biblical times when all Jews from all over the land traveled to Jerusalem to pay their respects and celebrate the holiday together in Jerusalem with everyone converging on the Holy Temple. And yes, all the Jews belong to the same synagogue. Somewhere in the divine orchestration of the year, it was determined that our souls needed a thrice yearly visit to the seat of our spirituality, to the hub of our holiness, which was the temple in Jerusalem. So we were to leave our homes, leave everything behind, and vacation, so to speak, with the rest of our brethren in the capital of our homeland. Now, the idea of three is a recurring one, right? Just as we eat three times a day, as our bodies need to be filled regularly with physical nourishment and sustenance, our souls are also invited to pray three times a day. There is a morning prayer called Shacharit, an afternoon prayer called Mincha, and an evening prayer before we go to bed called Ma'ariv. The idea here is that just as the body needs to be nourished and sustained three times a day, our souls need to be nourished and sustained three times a day. How do we do this? By checking in with God three times a day. Once before we launch into our day to ask for divine assistance and to thank and praise God for everything he does for us. Then, in the middle of the chaos and craziness of the day, we are asked to step away from it all and do a quick five to ten minute check-in with God to center and ground ourselves and remind ourselves of what really makes the world go round. And finally, just before we go to bed, we wrap it up by reconnecting with our spiritual source, thanking God for the day, and asking Him for a good night's sleep. So likewise, the vacation concept of checking in in this very significant way three times a year sort of tracks with this idea. You see, life is busy and hectic, right? And we often lose the forest for the trees. I never understood when people like flex their muscles by saying that they haven't been on vacation in however many years as though the most overworked person wins some kind of competition that I didn't know I was a part of. Because the truth is the opposite. The person who understands the need for a break is to be admired. Once a week, we can check in with our spiritual source on Shabbat. Three times a year, we can check in with God on our holidays by leaving our homes or in modern times, leaving our places of employment and checking in with our synagogues, with our communities, with our faith. Because 
Vacation in Judaism doesn't just mean not working. I mean, not working is a great place to start, but then we need to build on it by reminding ourselves that a vacation should really be about paying attention to our souls. So in what way does Judaism teach us to celebrate our vacations? There's a very interesting phrase in the Talmud that instructs us how to celebrate our holidays. It goes like this, Chatzil Lashem v'chatzil Lachem. That means that half of the holiday should be for you and half of the holiday should be for God. So what does that look like? It means that on the one hand, we enjoy our Jewishly mandated vacation by dedicating our time to God, right? So that means on some level, part of our holiday should be spent performing the mitzvot of the holiday, like eating in a sukkah on Sukkot or celebrating with a Seder on Passover attending synagogue, connecting to the spirituality of the day by studying the meaning of the holiday and engaging in conversations around that. But it also means that the half that's for you is about resting, enjoying, relaxing, great food, and other stuff like that. In short, we celebrate a Jewish vacation by nourishing both our bodies and our souls. Vacation that only nourishes our bodies will not be ultimately satisfying in the long term. But a vacation that only nourishes our souls won't be as enjoyable. And in Judaism, the body and soul team up to create a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. Our souls need our bodies to move around this world and do good deeds. I mean, a disembodied soul can't do anything without its physical container, which is our body, but a body without a soul has no meaning or purpose. The Talmud tells a story of a king who owned a beautiful orchard with delicious figs. He appointed two watchmen to guard the figs. One was unable to walk, and the other could not see. Neither could access the figs on his own. So one day, the man who couldn't walk said to the blind man, I see beautiful things in the orchard. Why don't you put me on your shoulders, and then we can pick and eat them? The blind person couldn't see the figs on his own because he needed the eyes of his friend. And the man who couldn't walk could see the figs but not access them. So the first man climbed on the shoulders of the second man, told him where to go, and directed him so they could both enjoy the wonderful figs. This relationship symbolizes the partnership of body and soul because each on its own is limited and neither can access all the riches of this world on its own. But when you marry the two together, the enjoyment at your disposal is limitless. When we put them together, we get an unbeatable force. When we nourish both body and soul together in our Jewish spiritual vacations, AKA our holidays, we have the possibility for the greatest form of nourishment that one could achieve. And you might still want another vacation after your vacation. And that's cool too. I approve. This is the Book of Life. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to Momentum Podcasts on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Join Ruchi again next time for more meaning and inspiration from Judaism's most important book to power your day with purpose. You're listening to a Momentum Podcast. For unlimited inspiration, wisdom, and empowerment, visit MomentumUnlimited.org.